the Indominus Rex. And the second Indominus Rex, where Irex is hatched on the same day at some point during 2012. Many people believe that the Indominus Rex sibling was killed there and then on that day, but that is simply not true. The Jurassic World website states that this species originated in the Hammond Creation Lab, but while the genetic research may have gone on there, it is more likely that they hatched in the Field Genetic Lab since this was off limits to the public. During the movie, they never once say that she ate the sibling just after she hatched. Now both Indominus is hatched at the same point during 2012. Implants were then placed in the animal's back just above the left shoulder. Scientists would have been watching these animals like a hawk as they were hatching. Do you honestly think they would have left her cannibalize the other one straight away on day one? Oh no no no, that comes later on. Now before we go any further, I'd like to introduce you to today's sponsor, FlexiSpot. FlexiSpot are the Indominus Rex when it comes to desks and chairs. I've been using FlexiSpot for a while now and there is no way I I would ever go back to my old desk or old chair. If you're like me and you're at your PC checking out dinosaur videos, looking at dinosaurs, wherever it might be, you need a FlexiSpot desk. This is the FlexiSpot E8 desk. I could be sitting at it, I can stand at it, I can raise it, I can lower it, everything I need for my bad back. It is extremely customizable. I even have a keyboard tray fitted to mine. I even have the FlexiSpot BS1 chair which is fully adjustable, has a backrest with integrated lumbar support to help against fatigue. So not only do I have a desk I can stand at, I can also lower it and sit in comfort as well. Having used FlexiSpot products for a while now, there is no way I would go back to any normal chair or product. FlexiSpot all the way. They even have 33% off right now. And if you want to grab yourself an absolute bargain, hit the sale link in my description. Both Irexes were intended to go in exactly the same paddock, which is paddock 11, and they did exactly that. They both went into paddock 11, where they were both maintained and fed. This is also where they learned how to communicate with each other, which explains the ability of the other Indominus being able to communicate with the raptors. It learned that by communicating with his sibling, but clearly something went pretty south with our communication between the two. The existence of the sibling also undermines one of Owen's criticisms, where he said she was raised in isolation. She wasn't actually raised in isolation, she just killed her at that rival slash food source later on in the paddock. Again, showing further evidence that the second Indominus, which we'll refer to as the Black Indominus at this stage, was actually in Paddock 11 when it was attacked. Now, officially, all we know is that it was attacked sometime prior to November 2014, and the attack would have had to have taken place when they were both in Paddock 11 and after the White Indominus learned how to communicate. Now, we know the White Indominus Rex escapes in December 2015 and is near enough fully grown. So with that information, prior to November 2014, we can assume that both Indominus Rexes were at least sub-adult stage due to the accelerated growth. Now you might also be asking the question, how could they have possibly fit two massive carnivores inside of that tiny paddock 11? Surely it was only meant for one. Well in actual fact, this probably was just a staging area. They moved the Irexes onto the actual original enclosures which would be displayed in the park. This original paddock 11 was way out the way and was never meant to be for public display. In all likely fact, the White Indominus probably became too unstable, resulting in them feeding it with a crane and unable to move it as soon as they would have liked. Which brings me on to the crane. The crane was also put in to feed the animal because it started attacking the feeders and handlers. I'm guessing they tried to give it the same positive treatment as the other carnivores on the island, but she became too dangerous. So what actually happened then? The two Indominuses at some point would have been living quite peacefully in Paddock 11, but at some point that Indominus would have turned on his sibling and ate her. The spacing could have been a problem at some point because they could have been competing for food. This is also what happened with the original raptors in Jurassic Park 1 where the big one came in and slaughtered all the other raptors apart from two. And technically they were all siblings as well. So this isn't the first time this has happened in Jurassic Park. And another thing, we also know the Irexes were made from part raptor. This could be embedded in their DNA all the way back from Jurassic Park 1. 
proving the theory that they didn't attack each other straight out of the egg. Which brings me to my next point, because the space was so small in that paddock, they would have had to have been fairly large to compete with each other. During the juvenile stage, they wouldn't actually be that large and the paddock would be big enough for them both. I can only think the fact that because they got so big so quickly, they took up so much space, they were constantly in each other's way and that paddock was nowhere near big enough, which caused so much confrontation, eventually leading to a big fight in the paddock. Now, what would that fight actually have looked like? We can only deduce from the white Indominus Rex, which is the only living one at the time during the movie, that it was actually a fairly quick and straightforward affair. My thoughts would be that the Irex is both being extremely intelligent, the white Irex could have ambushed and taken the other one by surprise, resulting in minimal injury. And as we see on the white Indominus, there are no known injuries when she's in that paddock on her own. Show in a very minimalistic attack back, proving that she could have easily have jumped the other Indominus while it slept or taken it by surprise. This is also where she could have potentially worked out the tracking device, as when she attacked and killed her sibling, she found the tracking object inside. Thus, knowing there was a tracking object in herself, she could have also worked it out, seeing the retrieval tree heading into the pen and going straight for the tracker. What is interesting is the fact that she kills her sibling, but doesn't attack the raptors straight out, showing that if there was potentially enough space in an enclosure, that she may not have attacked attacked her sibling outright. Perhaps if they had transported them a little earlier to them enclosures which were meant in the park, they would have actually saved both Indominus's lives. But you might argue the fact that she is just a natural born killer. That's what she was created for. All the characteristic traits of these killers amalgamated into one. Because let's not forget, she also starts killing for sport as soon as she leaves. So there could be an argument to say that she actually killed her sibling simply because she thought it was a sport. The pressure and strain of the small enclosure, all these hunting abilities all into one being, maybe got the best of her and she just wanted to attack anything on sight, and that was her sibling. I mean, it is shown as that in the movie. Let's also not forget that it wasn't getting the proper care it needed. The raptors themselves got all the care under the sun from Owen, but when it came to the Indominus Rex, they mistreated it with a small enclosure, which resulted in it killing its sibling, and then it only got worse from there. They isolated it then with the crane, and never really upgraded its enclosure. But let's just take a step back a second. Imagine they did do all this, and there were two Indominus Rex siblings. Imagine if they decided that they wanted to escape together. The resulting carnage could be unimaginable and they could still be even out there today. There is no way Rexy, Raptors or anything else on that island would be able to stop two rampaging Indominus Rex. Now we all know of Paddock 11, that was to keep the Indominus Rex, but there was also a Paddock 10. That could have been used to house the second Indominus Rex, but they never go round to transporting it. As we know, Paddock 9 housed the T-Rex, Paddock 10 was empty, and Paddock 11 had the original Indominus Rex. So what was in Paddock 10 then? If you want to know all about that, I recommend checking this video out here. Don't forget, if you like this video, please show your support and give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe. There are plenty of other videos on the channel just like this one. Go and watch. I'm Shadows, and I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Thank you, and I'll see you again. Bye-bye now.